Sarita Orchard was established in the mid-1980s as a mixed summer fruit and pit fruit orchard growing for export and the local market. The group that owns the orchard made a decision in 2006 to focus on cherries. We're predominantly cherries. We've got 25 hectares of cherries. Last year we pulled out the last of the apricots and we've got some green gauges. I've been in the industry all of my adult life. I grew up on an orchard and um, this orchard was set up in the early 80s when peaches and nectarines were very predominant. Uh, the export market was strong for them. So we were a mixed orchard of apricots, peaches and nectarines. Gradually the nectarine market has gone down uh, as far as exports go and so we've switched to cherries. We're export focused because the money's better. <laughs> The uh, industry here is quite small by the world standards and uh, we've got a good climate. About 10 years ago we made a conscious decision to switch away from a mixed orchard to specialising in cherries. That allows us to get better equipment that handles it. That's good, that's 25. It's a very high risk business. This is the only time of year that we make any money, the rest of the time we're spending it. So we have a nine week window to get all our income in for the 12 months. The strategy that we've used is having early crops and late crops. So previously we started after Christmas, now we start uh, the first week of December. So we have um, early crops, export crops going way before Christmas now, which we didn't used to have, and we have late crops going into the first week of February. Birds are probably our biggest problem growing cherries and we use a variety of techniques to control them. We have people on motorbikes with sirens and horns going from daylight till dark. We have gas bird scarers that go bang um, and they're on a carousel, so they bang in a different direction every time they go off. Uh, we've got these reflective tapes in the trees that we put in in the spring each year. I think it's just a flashing light that helps those. We have hawks on poles that fly around when it blows. Uh, we've got a light that we're trying out that floods the block with light rays that disturbs the birds. And uh, we've got electric squawkers that make a squawking sound. A lot of orchards have netted. Uh, we've got one block that we've netted for uh, various reasons, um, and it works well. But uh, just the cost of putting it in, we think, well, we can't afford it, so we're just using traditional techniques. We netted 2.5 hectares and it was 132,000. Once we get down to about four hectares, we stop bird scaring. Because you've got staff spread around and the staff, just the movement in the trees, I think, protects it. But one of the things that we've noticed now that there's a lot more cherries growing is that birds are becoming less of an issue than they were 20 years ago when we had two hectares of cherries. Now that we've got 25 hectares of cherries and our neighbours have got big blocks of cherries, the bird problem's diminished. I think that birds keep a natural population level and um, I think the fact that there's more food doesn't mean that there's more birds. I think that the, the natural balance keeps them at a level that we can cope with. The varieties that we grow start with Glowheart which is first week of December, and then we'll progress gradually through the varieties so that our risk is spread. This is a Summerland variety bred in the States, Washington State. The bulk of our varieties come from the Summerland program. Cherries fruit on second year wood. They don't fruit on the first year wood, so this wood here, this is first year wood. Next year that'll have fruit buds on it. You can see just at the base of this here where we've got second year wood, we've got fruit. This is second year wood here, it's got fruit on it. This is first year wood here. And it'll continu continue fruiting on that wood for four or five years. But generally we try to rotate the wood so that we don't get older than four year old wood on the tree. Well, we've got 30 pickers on today and they're a collection of French people, Germans, Chinese, Malays. Accommodation is really important. Uh, we've got our own camping ground here and we have about 60 people living on site in cabins and camper vans and we also lease units from the chalets in Cromwell. We're not strip picking, in fact we very rarely strip pick. 
But yeah, we have quality controllers in the orchard watching what's going into the buckets. People are told if they're not picking the right thing. If you don't get the quality right in the buckets, then it's very costly to get it right in the pack house. When the pickers are picking, they have two barcodes each on their bucket. When the bucket's picked up from the orchard floor, one barcode goes on a sheet, and that's what they get paid on. The other one stays on the bucket until it's tipped onto the tables in the pack house. If the pack house finds a bad bucket, then they can go straight back to the picker. Once it's picked, it comes in to the pack house on a trailer. It goes through an external hydro cooler to take the field heat out, then goes into the chiller, where we hold it until it's ready to pack. Today we're packing for export markets in China through an export company called RD8, and uh, we're probably going to do seven or eight tonne during the day. We're Europe GAP accredited, um, and so we get audited. Uh, we get um, audited three times a year. We've got a Red Pearl electronic sorter. It's all done with cameras and lights, which sorts colour, size and softness. The grader works with compressed air. It's just when it gets to where the cameras decide it's to go, it just gets a shot of air and it's blown off into water. It goes on through the drying belts and then straight into the box, from the box swayed and into the cool store. Because our main competitors are sea freighting, our, our point of difference is air freight. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.